mom's from India. My dad's an Oregon farm boy. He was in the Peace Corps. That's how he met my mom. He was in India in the Peace Corps. So they got married and they moved to Oregon a few months before I was born. So I was born in rural Oregon um, with, you know, an immigrant mother in the early 70s who was very much missing her homeland. So my childhood was kind of seeped in that nostalgia. Um, and then when I was like seven, eight years old, they divorced and my mom remarried. We moved to Arizona, then we moved to Philadelphia. And I kind of spent my early teenage years in Philadelphia. And then when I was about 16, we moved back to Oregon because my mom just couldn't really deal with two teenage girls on the East Coast. So she thought, okay, I'll move back to Oregon and you know the girls will be close to their dad so that's kind of my personal history it's it's like seeped in this immigrant experience in rural Oregon that's that really sums me up like I'm you know I grew up well so when we lived in Tucson and in Philly my sister and I would come home every summer to visit our dad and we stayed on my grandparents farm in Oregon City so when we lived on the East Coast, we were kind of like the weird girls from Oregon, but then when we came back to Oregon, our cousins were like, yeah, you're the city slickers, but we weren't white, we weren't black, we weren't fully Asian, you know what I mean? So we, we were always kind of like half in one world and half in the other, whether it was like city or rural or Asian or white, and so that's, that's my personal history. And... I don't know if you want me to talk about music at all, but I, I grew up listening to old Bollywood from my mom, but my dad, um, you know, he just listened to basically American rock. So that was kind of what I grew up on, and then I became obsessed with Madonna, and then I became obsessed with the Smiths. <laughs> like every good girl. Yeah, and, and I didn't really listen to um, American indie rock. Like, I was really obsessed with British pop and Britpop. So once I started DJing, like that was, that was kind of my specialty. And then once we hooked up, it was, he was really interested in the little bit of Indian music that I played. And I don't know, it was like more through, um, I, my mom's not from Punjab, so I didn't grow up with Bhangra, but I grew up with Bollywood. And there are, you know, there's some elements of that kind of folk that folk tradition that comes through Bollywood. So when I started playing, I mean, I've had one Bhangra CD, honestly, when I started DJing, because I was really into, way up, into other stuff. But Steven was kind of like, wait, what's that stuff you're playing? And I don't know, it was like his excitement and, and me trying to like kind of find my roots. Um, that's where... And you're moving to, well, living in New York. I, I did live in New York for several months, and I went to a couple Desi parties while I was there. Well, not a couple, but I went to quite a few, and, um, I don't know, it was... I think that played into your developing interest, because there was so much music available, there were so many, like, nights to go out to. And it wasn't just, it wasn't just club nights, though, like, I was going to all kinds of things while I was there. And this is in my late twenties was when I kind of finally was like, wait, I'm half Indian. Like I'm into this. Cause you know, in my teenage years I was into heavy metal and I went to go see Danzig and Anthrax and Iron Maiden and Metallica. Like that's what I was into. I was like, I'm not Indian. Like that's my mom, you know? And so it took me another decade to kind of come back to Indian music. So Anyway, that's my background, and I could go on about that for a long time. Um, I have a very white bread American experience. <laughs> um, my parents were very religious when I was growing up, so they were not happy with my listening to music. Um, it wasn't until I was a sophomore in high school that they were like, okay, you can do one of those like 12 cassettes for a penny, you know, Columbia House. <laughs> okay. um, and up until that point, um, there was a brief period of time where they were like, well, you can listen to Christian rock. So I had this like little window where I was like, all right, I'm listening to Christian rock, which is mostly terrible. You heard it from me. <laughs> um, but
but then my friends, all my friends were like the punk skaters at school, so they would sneak me little dubbed cassettes of, you know, GBH or The Descendants or whatever, so I kind of had this little thing on the side that my parents didn't know about, because I lived in the basement, and they couldn't necessarily keep up with what I was doing. Um, so when I was allowed to listen to music, the first thing I did was explore the music of my peers, which was all classic rock, Led Zeppelin, that sort of thing. Um, and then, I think sophomore year in high school, I discovered The Cure. Now, as somebody who was very miserable and depressed and, you know, mopey teenager, and nobody understood him, and he was so lonely, and he had no girls, soaked up Robert Smith, soaked up The Cure, and then that led me to things like New Order and The Smiths and kind of the whole British alternative world at that time. Um, and then that just kind of led one thing to the next, just listening to all sorts of interesting things. Um, and that became super indie rock in the like mid to late 90s. Indie rock on the one hand, and then like free jazz experimental music on the other. So before I became a DJ, I was almost entirely listening to music that was the kind of thing that you just listen to in your bedroom by yourself, not something that you would be playing out for people anywhere. And there was a period of time where I thought, I should get rid of all this music that I have that's kind of like public, dancey type music, because I don't listen to it. I just listen to weird experimental stuff. And so what good is this stuff in my collection? But then a friend of mine said, hey, you want to DJ a, a house party? I was like, okay. So I kind of gathered together those records I was going to get rid of, and then that just kind of led to another, to another, to another. And when I started out, it was just, I want to play everything. So it would be some oldies because you know there's great old soul and r&b and that kind of stuff and then well i like my girl punk too or i like my old latin records as well um well i like drum and bass you know it's cool to mix some drum and bass in of course hip-hop funk and i didn't think i was ever going to be able to settle on a single genre i thought i'm not going to be a single genre dj i'm going to be someone that plays everything and then um there were different people that i would dj with around that time and Anjali and I, we uh, met working at Powell's, um, Powell's Books, where she's now working one day a week at the Hawthorne store, and I'm still part-time at the Burnside store after 16 years. Um, so she said, hey, you know, I'd like to learn how to DJ. My idea about DJing is you don't learn by playing in your bedroom. You learn by getting out in front of people. So I said, this weekend there's a house party. Why don't you come spend some records? Um, and so she did play a wide variety of stuff, but what excited me the most was the Indian music, and specifically the few Bhangra stuff songs that she had and that became an obsession like a just all-consuming obsession and I remember like early on after having bought literally hundreds and hundreds of dollars of this music at different Indian stores sitting in my bedroom thinking I could play this all night and that was just not something that ever happened to me before so we went a couple years mixing um, Bunger and Bollywood in with the range of other things that we were interested in and then we kind of just realized more and more that there were people that were showing up that just wanted to hear the Indian stuff. They were kind of like, well, it's nice that you play hip-hop or Britpop or indie rock or whatever. It a couple of years. It was like a year and a half or so. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Um, we're talking around 2000, 2001. <laughs> and so it was 2002 in July that we threw our first dedicated Indian party. And it was a huge success. And it was like, oh, wow, there's a giant thirst for this in this community. Um, and so now we'll be celebrating our nine-year anniversary of throwing on Daz parties, July 2nd at Rotary. 